A little bit about Women's Business Club. We started back uh, in January 2013 in Cheltenham, UK. And um, I never intended to set up a business. My first business failed and I, I pretty much wrote myself off as a businesswoman. Um, I was sure that that's, I wasn't good at it and that's not what I, I meant to do. But what I didn't realize was that um, that was almost like my university. That was like my degree in business because I don't have a, a formal education. And everything, the, the, the successes and the failures and everything I went through in my first business equipped me to run this business, to run Women's Business Club and my cat business and various other businesses. It enabled me to, to learn through hard knocks. Unfortunately, I am that kind of person. You know, my husband always says, you learn the easy way or the hard way. And I'm one of those people who have to learn the hard way. Um, I jump in trial and error, try things, mess them up. And then, oh, now I've learned. So probably not the best way to to learn but that's certainly how I've learned and so when I started Women's Business Club I didn't start Women's Business Club if you know what I mean I had no intention of starting a business um, or doing anything that I've, I've got to do today but I believe that who you are will always just come to the surface no matter in what context there are things inside of us that they just come up and one of my things is I love connecting people. I love empowering people. And I find myself doing that quite naturally in any given context. You know, I can be at a school meeting, PTA meeting, church meeting, you name it, business meeting. And my natural instinct is I love connecting people. Oh, you should meet this person. Oh, this person's amazing. And just connecting people. And then again, I, I didn't realize that not everybody has this. I thought everybody had this, but I seem to have the ability to see potential in people like, oh, wow, I can see things that people aren't seeing themselves. And I love to just draw that out and encourage and empower. And so this, I believe, is, is who I am as a person. And no matter what I do, even if I try to suppress this, this is what's going to come out of me. And it's the same for you. There are things inside of you. If you look back, you'll probably see a thread. Certain things will just come out of you because that's who you are. And I love doing business knowing who I am. I love doing business in a way that's a natural flow for me. I'm not saying it's easy. It's still not easy. But there's this natural flow that I can just be me. And it's liberating. And I think it's better for the people I'm doing business with as well. And so Women's Business Club started with me just connecting people saying, let's get together, let's get some business women together and just have a lunch. In my previous business, I, um, I had to do a lot of business networking because that's what you do. And I hated it. I hated feeling like I didn't fit in. I hated feeling like I had to dress a certain way, speak a certain way, act a certain way. And I just never felt good enough. And that wasn't really on the networking organizer. It was very much where I was at and my lack of confidence and insecurity. But because of how I felt, I thought I want to create something that I would enjoy going to, that I would feel comfortable in, that I would love, that would empower me. Um, and I've always worked with women, not by choice. I've just ended up always working in different settings and working with women's groups. And so I thought, well, let's try this. And so I built this um, lunch, this event on you know, seven key things that were really important to me. And so this photo you see in here is one of our first lunches. So one of the things that was really important to me was a very friendly welcome. I hated walking into a room and not knowing who to speak to. And being an introvert, I would head to the coffee, stand there with a cup in my hand and stay on the side you know, of the room, whereas extroverts would just go straight into the middle. Um, I didn't like that feeling. So for me, the very first step was a friendly welcome. Make sure that the leader greets the person and helps them feel um, at home or, can, or introduces them to somebody else to get the conversation started. So that was one. And then number two was quality food. I, I like to look after my health. Um, and I did find when I did a lot of networking, champagne and canapes, sandwiches and cakes, I put on weight. I was like, I don't want to do business like this. <laughs> and so the second thing that was really important to the our Ma events was a quality lunch. It needed to be healthy food and it needed to be buffet style. So you could pick and choose what you wanted to eat. And so that was the second thing. We only worked with gorgeous venues so that you could have an experience and quality food. 
of course, the conversation was important. You know, it's important that we are allowing women to to get together and to connect. And what I didn't want was people breaking off into cliques and, you know, help it making people, a new people feel like an outsider. So the way we avoided that problem was we kept the numbers to 20 or less per lunch. And so there were never more than 20 women at the lunches. That meant that there were enough people to have conversations like the one you see in the photo and not break off into clicks of, you know, for regulars and, and, and newbies. It worked. I don't know exactly if there's a science behind it, but that number seemed to be our prime number, our premium number. We had 30 at one point as the cutoff number and it was just too many. It didn't work. So that, but the conversation, that's what it's all about. An expert speaker, back when we did allow men speakers, this year is the first year we said it's about empowering women, so we want to make a platform for female speakers, so we no longer have male speakers. But back then at our first event, this is one of our very first speakers, and I didn't give him a rose, I gave him a bottle of beer with a pink tag on, that was his man rose. Um, some men, they, they, they love the roses and others just laugh at me, but the key was having quality, quality speaker that really invested in us. Then we have our Wonder Bra session. Absolute favorite part of, of what we do. Nothing to do with your bras, don't panic. Um, but what it is, is a time when we lift and support you in your business. And so one person would bring a problem area that they face into the table and everybody um, around the table would brainstorm that one problem area. And we all win, we all gained. And not only the person bringing the problem, but we all learned, we all grew from, from the Wonder Bra session. And then, as I mentioned previously, roses. We end with the roses. I love to say goodbye to each person individually, look them in the eye, say thank you for coming, make them feel valued. And for some people, it didn't mean that much. But for others, the stories I got um, after the events, like, wow, that rose just made my day. Or, wow, I put the rose in my kitchen. And the following week, I had a really bad day, looked up, and it just lifted me. And so it's such a small touch, but I believe it's important and it makes a big difference. And so that's how I chose to run the events. And to be honest, the other thing that was really important to me that obviously there's no slide for is... is um, Follow-ups, you know, making sure that people stay connected in between events, that people are forging genuine relationships, not just coming in, swapping business cards and pitching to each other. So we did actually ban business cards. You know, when you send it around the whole table, you don't do that. You only exchange business cards when you feel like it's a meaningful connection. So that was it. That's how we started. And to be honest, that is how we continued. And obviously, COVID hit. but that that is still from that very first event the way we do it the program even the price point has stayed for 10 years we've managed to keep it the same because it works um we also celebrated at the end of the year our very first conference and awards and that's quite laughable because this is what it looked like it's not really a conference is it it's like how many people are there 14 people and we did some tongue-in-cheek awards and it was great fun and it was just merging two or three clubs together uh, to celebrate uh december to celebrate the end of the year but what i learned from that was that these awards really meant something to the ladies i just meant it as a bit of fun entertainment at the event and and the word awards weren't even very serious awards there were a lot of funny ones but people shared them, people got on the radio, people did press releases. I'm like, wow, this is, this is interesting. One lady said it gave her the courage to continue after a very bad year. And that was our very first awards in 2013. And since then I've realized the, these awards are important to us businesswomen. We don't have a promotion at work to say we're doing a good job. We, we don't always get the encouragement that we need. Not everybody's fortunate to have a husband or I have daughters who are supportive husbands. I have an amazing support system, but some people don't have any at all. And so these awards are valuable for so many reasons, but also they're valuable because of the marketing and PR value. It's insane how much traction you can get purely from a nomination, let alone a win. And so we, again, that stayed. And so that was our very first one, 2013. And this was our most recent one. And so it's just been amazing to see the journey of the conference and awards. The conference and awards are always in person, um, in key locations. At the moment in 
in the UK, but we want to take these conferences, you know, across the world. <clears throat> uh, but we also do the awards that you are at. Um, and this was because of, mm -mm -mm. you know, I don't even, I don't even want to put the slide on for too long. In fact, let's get off of it because it's just not a nice one. We had to go online, didn't we? We all had to. We had to figure out how to keep our businesses afloat and go online. And so we did. And the result of that was this virtual global conference and awards. And what that enabled us to do was to go outside the borders of the UK. We, we're now in six countries and growing. We're now able to empower so many more women. We're now able to do so much more good because even though COVID was tragic and, and a lot of sad things happened, there was also a lot of good that came out of it. And so we were really pushed to expand our thinking, to expand our borders. And now we have a global vision. You know, We want to reach as many women as possible and empower them, support them um, as best we can. So in January, we're going right back to the beginning. We're going back to in-person lunches we're relaunching our business lunches we've been we've just been doing virtual for the past few years but we're relaunching our, our lunches and we're going to start bringing those very special events back for business women and we're going to launch these across the world but we're just starting with one back in Cheltenham where it all started 10 years ago we also on a mission to launch a thousand coffee and co-working events as a minimum we obviously want this to be a much greater number and coffee and co-working events are events where first of all it's free to attend it's it's easy to lead if you want to lead one get in touch it's a super easy model so that we can achieve the number we want and our goal for this is to get women back out and connecting in person we're not doing any virtual events going forward from january except our annual global virtual awards other than that everything we're going to really encourage in person um, it's different something happens when we meet in person it's there, there's something that we cannot replicate um, virtually and there is a place for virtual and I will continue to do virtual meetings because I find that's a really good use of my time but we are on a mission let's get business women back out and so in order to make it possible so that no business woman has to feel alone we need to get these set up everywhere so anybody can lead a coffee and co-working event anybody the, the we use venues that give us a free space usually a public space where they serve coffee and tea so get in touch i don't want to use up our time now talking about that but literally it's it's very easy anyone can do it and we give you our full support um, and it's all done under our brand so we're really going to be pushing that next year to get the, this first thousand set up I've already covered our business lunches. And so that's just a little bit about the history of Women's Business Club. Um, obviously, there's so much more to say, but that's, that's where we've come from and, that, and that's where we're going. I have 10 minutes left and I want to give you my top three business tips off the back of this, this journey. So I, I'm calling it three keys to winning in business. And... Oh, I wrestled over this. I thought long and hard. I have so little time to share with you what is the most important thing for me to share. And um, I think the first most important thing before I get onto the three keys to winning in business is that if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. So please don't be discouraged if you're finding it hard. Please don't throw in the towel because you, you just can't get to where you want to get to. That's why Women's Business Club exists, because together we can get through the challenges. Together we can support each other. There are so many ways that we can help you in business from all the way from free stuff all the way through to, um, you know, fee paying support. But, but we are doing our utmost to make sure that there's a place for business women to go to get support. And so please get in touch. And if you're smashing it and if you, 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 you know, you're doing well and you you've achieved your goals and you're going places um, and you want to connect with other women who are in the same place, there's a place for that. We call it my boardroom. And if you want to give back, you know, you can come on board as a mentor and you can just say, well, I want to be a member, but I want to buddy up with somebody who's new and in business. And so you, you can just give back on a very um, 
almost casual basis. Um, so my, th my three top tips off the back of what I've learned in the past 10 years, I don't consider myself an expert, but I do think I've learned a lot and I'd like to share the things that I deem most important at this point in my journey. 10 years time, I might say something completely different. The first thing is know your numbers. I've mentored a lot of businesswomen and I'm always horrified, horrified. First of all, no budget in place. Second of all, no clue of what they're earning, what they're spending. Um, and thirdly, just no idea how to manage the most basic business um, spreadsheets, projections, et cetera, et cetera. And I understand some people are not numbers people or they think they're not. I once mentored a lady who had a, a very fast growing business. She was doing really well and she didn't know her numbers. Sat down with her, showed her how to reconcile her past income and expenditure, how to analyze it and how to do some projections. My goodness, this lady went from hating numbers to loving them. She said, Angela, I feel in control of my business. This is amazing. I love it. I feel like I'm, I just am addicted now to doing my numbers. And I love that response. I was like, yes, we can all have that. We just need a little guidance if that's not something we enjoy, or maybe you're smashing it and you're fully in control of the numbers. But there's a third option. You could outsource it. You could get an expert to, to just give you the the bottom line numbers, the reports that you need, regardless of how you do it as a business owner or as a team leader in a company or wherever you at, knowing the numbers gives you the ability, gives you choices, gives you um, control, gives you the you know, ability to, to get to where you want to get to. Without your numbers, you're probably just like a dog chasing your tail. You just, who knows? Oh, thank you, Tamron. She's offered a 30 minutes free consultation. Woohoo! That's what we need. I'll chat to you about that later. We can distribute the info. And then the second one is da -da -da -da, know your people. Again, you've got to fall in love with your numbers, but you've got to fall in love with people. At the end of the day, any business, there's somebody, a human being, that's going to pay your invoice, and your business needs invoices to be paid to stay afloat, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, you're gonna need people around you, whether you have staff, whether you're building a team, whether you just need um, a peer to peer support, whatever it is, regardless, there's no ways that you and I are gonna build a successful business completely alone. It's, it's not gonna happen. We might, have, we might have a measure of success, but if we truly want to achieve all we can achieve in this lifetime, we're gonna need to involve people. And I'm particularly passionate about temperaments, um, uh, psychometric testing, personality types, et cetera, et cetera. Like I just, the more I learned, I recently discovered Enneagram and I just like, wow, this is so accurate. This is mind blowing. And now all my team had to do an Enneagram, like my children, my husband, like, okay, I'm a little bit nuts. You don't have to be as nuts as me, but really once I got to understand them, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Even in my home, my 13-year-old my daughter did it and my husband did it. And we discovered they're the same Enneagram number. So I'm like, well, that explains a lot. And now I feel better equipped to support them and their relationship. And same with my team. I was able to put Jehu in the job he's in because he sent his Enneagram. And I, I could see that that was the best job for him. And I, I better understand how to support him in his career. And I'm hoping that him, him and I will get some fantastic results because I better understand him. Now, you don't have to be nuts like me and go around asking your friends and family and everybody, you know, to, to do an Enneagram test, but find a way to really make it about them. It's about the people in your world. It's about understanding them. It's about understanding yourself. Again, I do a lot of self-study. You can't understand other people if you don't even know yourself. And then when you're doing business, it, it's going to be so much more enjoyable. But also you can make quicker decisions because you know this person's not a good fit for the job or this person is just not a client I want because some money is just not worth it, et cetera, et cetera. If I had more time, I'd go into it, but I, I do not have enough time. And I hope, but I hope you get the gist. I hope you understand that this is about really becoming a, a student of, of people. And it's a lifelong course, never ends. Just get to know people, 
more and more get to understand them, get to understand how to sell. You can sell to different temperaments in different ways um, to have the greatest success you, if you understand them. And once you have done a little bit of self-study, just a little bit, even if you cover the four basic temperament types, so we've got choleric, sanguine, phlegmatic, melancholic, those come back from Hi Hippocrates days, those four basic temperaments underpin most psychometric tests. Um, if you can just understand those basic four things, you'll even be able to tell the person's temperament within a, a good, you know, good amount of accuracy looking at their LinkedIn profile picture, looking at how they present themselves online. And then if you want to contact them, you know how to contact them. I'm very much a red um, personality type, hate fluff, hate long emails. If you want to sell something to me, just tell me and tell me the price and I can make a decision. You know, don't try and convince me. Uh, just give me the, the, the facts. Give it to me straight. Same with my staff. Just tell me. I won't be offended, but I don't like guessing and not knowing what's going on and trying to figure it out. Whereas someone else in my team might hate that direct approach, especially the green, the phlegmatic temperament type. I have to be so careful. Uh, Laura, our creative director, is a, a phlegmatic and I have to be careful not to bulldoze her, but to be very gentle with her and understand how to manage her targets. Um, whereas a one Enneagram loves a long list of goals and just smashes them, Laura will become overwhelmed and so give her one or two. I'm running out of time, but you get the gist of it. Fall in love with knowing people. It doesn't only help you in life, but it definitely helps in business. And then the last one is know yourself, you know, the more you know yourself, the more you understand yourself, the more you're going to be able to understand why you are a certain way, why you do things, um, the more you're going to be able to understand um, what you should and shouldn't be doing, uh, making decisions. The more you know yourself, the easier the journey becomes. Because building business, I'm going to say it one last time, it's flipping hard. Building business is not easy. But understanding yourself and your responses to certain things and how you build your business, it's just going to take some of that weight off of you, some of that pressure off of you and <clears throat> make the journey a little bit easier. And so those are my, my whistle stop quick top tips. Um, and of course, if you want any help or if you have any questions about it, uh, by all means, get in touch. I don't have all the answers. Um, I'm learning. I'm growing myself. And I'm surrounded by amazing people across the world who I'm learning from and, and growing with. But get in touch because if I don't have the answer, I could certainly introduce you to someone who does have the answer. And that's what it's all about.